What's up, everybody? How's it going? So today we're going to do something a little different. <clears throat> Instead of just doing a jam, actually do something productive. So I first started learning about this type of stuff from my favorite YouTube channel, Simon the Magpie. He does all kinds of crazy stuff. That's where I started first getting inspired by circuit bending. And a lot of the more like avant-garde type stuff that you can do with uh, electronic music. So today, in that theme, we're gonna be doing stuff with piezo. <laughs> contact microphones yeah I've decided to name this show piezo party I don't know if that's how you pronounce the word properly but I like how it sounds so that's what we're doing I did just finish lunch so I apologize if there's any rice in my facial hair check my mirror, my cuckoo inspired mirror. So you can already kind of see who I'm looking to for uh, my musical inspiration here. So anyway, this is what we're gonna do today. It's basically a contact microphone and a quarter inch out. And then anything this touches makes a bunch of fun noise. For example, <clears throat> This is one that I pre-wired just so I could uh, make sure I knew I was doing it right and to uh, give kind of a good example here. So I'll plug this into the amp, get some power to it, amp on. So yeah, so anything that touches it is going to get turned into, you know, electronic instrument, which is super cool because then you can run it through effects and stuff and make like, you know, relatively mundane noises like when you're touching that microphone, you can make them sound way cooler, like sending it through reverb or delay or chorus or whatever. I don't know. There's cool stuff that you can do with all of it. So what I wanted to do today was just sort of show you how I did this. And I was always really intimidated by it because it's, you know, soldering and, oh, if you do it wrong, it's not gonna work anymore. Or if it gets too hot, it's gonna not work anymore. I like, had all these things in my head about, oh, I'm gonna screw it up. And even now looking at this, like I can see that that wasn't a great solder, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't move around like that, but it still works. And like, there's no reason to be intimidated by it. So, I have a whole bunch of these, you know, because I will screw up, and when I screw up, I've got other ones I can mess around with. Same thing with these, same thing with this, tons of backup stuff. So basically what we're going to do is uh, start with our soldering. That's kind of like step one. But anyway, so the idea behind the piezo mics is like you can take really weird stuff and uh, electrify it, el electronically listen to it. <clears throat> kind of like a pickup on a guitar, something like that. So anyway, one of the big things that uh, I did that people seemed really interested in, which is kind of what made me want to do this as like the first project for the vlog, right? Was this thing, and like everybody likes it because it's weird, it's pink and all that stuff, and it's got doorknobs on it, and those are things that you don't think about as being musical. But that's kind of what's fun about them, right? So my whole thing was I saw Simon the Magpie's video about making an elect electric doorstop, and I thought that was awesome. So I wanted to be like, how could I take that to the next level? So I put three on there, and then I was rebuilding a computer, and there was a heat sink for the CPU, and it just so happened to fit in the same spot of this Boss DS1 distortion chassis uh, enclosure that uh, I was using already because I was 
trying to circuit bend a DS1, and that's another video for another day. So anyway, just so happened to fit in there, I stuck it in there. It's got kind of a, you know, kind of an effect to it. It sounds kind of cool <clears throat> when you run it through effects and stuff. So the whole thing is I got all this cool stuff on here. All these things that make all these kinds of resonant noises, things that would sound cool through a delay or re reverb or both or more. And then I got really intimidated by attaching the piezo mic to it. And as you can see, it just fits right in the same uh, quarter inch hole that Boss dug, dug, drilled for their output that they had originally. And like, this is a nice enclosure, you know, that I pretty much got this distortion pole for free because everybody hates the DS1 for whatever reason. So if you look at the underside, all I did was I took some of this, this Elmer's Probon Advanced fancy white glue, fancy Elmer's glue. Don't worry, no, it's weather, it's 100% weatherproof and the performance is guaranteed. So, you know, so I took that and I put way too much of it on the piezo mic and I just blopped it in there, hit it with the heat gun because I was really impatient and it works pretty well. Let's listen to it. Let's get my exceedingly long guitar cable back out so we can listen to it. It's unnecessarily long. I have a little gang star in the background. I hope everybody's okay with that. If you're not, please watch me for the channel. Right? That's definitely picking up. So yeah, you can do some like crazy shit. Actually, I'm gonna go turn that off so we can actually enjoy this. Apologize if you can hear the gardener notes. But anyway, it's like a helicopter, right? It's pretty good. You run that through a delay and a reverb and stuff. Oh, sounds super cool. And it can go on for a really long time. You can even use it kind of like as a drone or something like that. Or if you're trying to do like sound effects, like live sound effects. And it's like, you know, it's something that is performative too. And I think a lot of people forget about that aspect of like, if you're a type of person that just plays guitar pedals, that is boring to watch as an audience member. Because you're just hunched over a little thing, twiddling knobs people can't see. So something like this, you know, gives them really s something silly to look at and like, what is that? Why is that so crazy looking? All that kind of stuff. So that's what I really like about this. Making it pink, you know, just makes it even more fun to look at. But it's really, 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 really simple to solder and wire. And it requires very little to do. And you can do it to any, you know, acoustic instrument. You get some really cool, crazy noises out of it. So... <clears throat> We're not gonna, we're not gonna recreate this today, because that's boring. And I already have one of these, and I want something else. Normally it would have a bottom on it. But the bottom is removed, so you can see inside. I want something a little bit different. Uh, there's a, uh, a guy that goes by Tataki that has done some cool like spring drones, and that's sort of what is inspiring today's project. So I went to. Home Depot and bought this spring assortment kit and there's so many types of different springs in here right but like that one caught my eye is that the same thing that looks like the same thing we could do this thing it's like kind of stiffer and shorter I could just do these at different lengths that one looks pretty cool. That sucks. I don't want to. I don't want to figure that out. 
but I might have to, you might have to watch me do it. That one's a little different. These don't seem like they would do what I kind of want to. This was one I was messing with earlier because it's already kind of conical. Um, yeah, you know, we'll start with that and we'll see where we go. I also purchased for your viewing pleasure on my trip to Home Depot, one of these spring door stock. It was, I think a dollar. It even has a nubbin on the end of it. So you can play it without hurting your little finger. Uh, the other thing I got for this project, uh, I'm going to list all of the ingredients in the description. I just got a whole bunch of screws and nuts. And I'm pretty sure they fit on each other. If they don't, we're going to be in trouble. So these are number eight, 32, one and a half inch screws. I figure that would give me enough distance off the top of my enclosure. And then just a bunch of these machine screws. Probably should have checked this before I started filming, but hey, look, it fits. Great. So what we're gonna do is suspend these springs from the machine screws uh, via the machine screw nuts. It'll be a lot more uh, obvious once we get to that point. But yeah, so there's those. I'll put that right there. Uh, I have a bunch of miscellaneous washers and stuff too because as you can see on this, I have a, a washer along here and I kind of like a little jingle jangle you get from it. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna, we're gonna experiment with that. I have, I'm gonna say right now, I have not explicitly planned the design of this pedal or this instrument or whatever you wanna call it. So if it turns out bad, it'll just be more entertaining for you, but I'm sh pretty sure it's gonna be good. So just, you know, be aware of that. I'm not a professional, I don't know what I'm doing. This wasn't planned, that's kinda why it's fun. So here's my enclosure. I ordered this for Mammoth Look. Mammoth Electronics. They're a really awesome website for ordering this stuff. I honestly think I might have ordered these from there too. Piezos, probably from Amazon, because I think they're pretty cheap on Amazon, but definitely all of the, 99% of the components that I order are from Mammoth. They're really good shipping, really good customer service. They have a really good selection of Davies knobs, which I'm gonna do a review of because I love them so much once we start doing reviews. But anyway, back to the project. This enclosure I got from Mammoth Electronics. Piezo, piezo contact microphone. Uh, I've, you know, I was noticing after I ordered these that Simon the Magpie uses ones that are probably like that big. And I would like to get some that are a different size to see what the difference is, but these seem to work like totally fine for me. <clears throat> so anyway, enclosure. Piezo mic, whatever kind of jack you want. I have quarter inch, because that's what I found. Uh, I ordered these a long time ago. Uh, the eighth inch ones, as far as I'm aware, would work just as fine. If you have a preference, use the one that you prefer, I guess. I don't know. Duh. So anyway, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put these springs on there via those, uh, <laughs> nuts and bolts geez, that we found earlier. We're gonna see what it sounds like. I'm gonna do, I think, you know, I thought about it. I thought about pre-recording uh, painting this because that's one of my favorite things about doing these is doing the paint jobs and the graphics and all that kind of stuff. But I think I'm gonna do a separate video on that and I think I'm gonna paint it after we hear what it sounds like so we can pretend that the sound of it inspired the paint job. So for this first part, for making the piezo mic, it's literally just these two things, solder and soldering iron. Those are your things that you need. I have a uh, little f extractor fan here so that hopefully I don't breathe the horrible cancer-causing chemicals that are in this lead free solder. <laughs> I mean, as far as I'm aware, this is okay to breathe. It, it's probably worse for me to live near a freeway than it is to solder indoors, but 
just to be safe, I'm going to turn this fan on for when, in, when we do the solder. It's going to make some noise. Just be prepared for that. So without further ado, I guess we could do the, uh, let's do some soldering. Let's check it out. Before we do that, I do want to make sure I thank the few people that have followed me. Please do follow me if you enjoy any of this kind of stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot more crazy, like weird stuff because it's fun and there's like no consequences to breaking things that don't cost anything. So I'm going to do some circuit bending stuff pretty soon. I think that'll be fun. So this is a wire stripper. This is not necessary. There's plenty of ways to strip wires. You can strip wires with your teeth if you feel so inclined, but this is just a lot faster and easier. I think I got these from Amazon as well. I kind of like that they look like an animal. Like, I'm going to strip your wire. Anyway, so we stripped some of the wire off there because I like having a little bit of room. So the big thing, that there's like only one thing you can screw up here, and it's getting your polarity proper. Getting the uh, correct color wire to the correct part of the thing. So for that, I've created this diagram, as well as sort of a checklist of things that you may or may not need. This is the part I'm focused on right here now, though. So we got this red center wire. Pew! And that's going to go to our positive connection here. I always have to double check just in case. So anyway, let's do that. I have this little Hako FX888D soldering iron. It's like the one that everybody recommends. Do like two minutes of research and see that that's the one everybody likes. I think I got a slightly pointier tip on it than what it came with. Maybe, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I think a lot of it's preferential anyway. Uh, I got this lead-free solder also on the same trip to my local hardware store. Normally I would put something down to protect the surface I was working on, but I don't care about this desk. That's why I'm using this desk for streaming and for doing videos. Because if we mess it up, it just gives us a little memory of that time that we did that thing. And I kind of like doing that stuff. I like it when you get to look back at the little dents and little bits of character on your desk and remember the time that you were painting something and you didn't use newspaper to prevent the overspray or that time you got really mad and hit it with a hammer I think there's some of those on here somewhere or the time you missed your swing and hit it with a hammer those are always fun too and you can laugh about those later or not whatever I don't know so I got this little third hand this is the cheesiest one ever I hate it it's never tight enough Maybe I'll do a video on making a third hand that is not garbage. I don't know. I'll also preface this with not being me not being the best solderer on the face of the planet. And that's why I was really intimidated by this project initially. Because I have successfully and unsuccessfully soldered things. And I haven't watched a video about how to be do soldering in a while. I feel like that should be melting, right? I probably should have done a little more practice with this beforehand or whatever, you know, but there we go. A little solder on there. I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. There we go. And it's like fresh. Ooh, I forgot to turn the fan on. Just breathed all of that in. I apologize for that fan noise. It won't last long. So, we're going to solder stuff with solder and there it goes and now there's some solder on there I'm truly terrible at this do not use this as an example of how to solder but I figure if the wire doesn't move I did my job so there we go black one in the middle right right yeah yeah okay red one to the other thing Let's do that part now.
There are better tutorials than I can ever give on soldering everywhere all over YouTube. Go watch one of those. And then comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Actually, really though, if anybody uh, has any actual tips for what I'm doing wrong, I'm really appreciate it. Because I know I'm doing something wrong. But you know what, it works. And that's kind of the thing, is you get the idea that some kind of precise precision thing that's only for science guys or something, you know? And like, it's not for you people that just like screwing around and... Gotta remember, like, all the people messing around with this stuff are the people that enjoy screwing around. Like, if this wasn't that easy to do, people wouldn't... The creative folks wouldn't get into it. Because creativity and smartness are... Don't always go hand. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway. So there we go. Is wired. Let's turn that off. That's super annoying. And then we're not going to need that anymore. We're literally, that's all the soldering we have to do. Like there's more work going to be used with a drill than the soldering iron for this freaking project. All right, let's see if it works. Where's my guitar? Cable. on. Oh gosh. Hey, it works. What do you, what do you know? It's so very loud. Look at guys, we did it. It works. That's what my beard sounds like through a PSM mic. Awful. Cool. All right. So step one of making one of these projects done. Literally what used to be the most intimidating step to me done in like what, 30 seconds? You know, nothing. Now the fun part. So we're gonna figure out how, where, all that jazz, we're gonna mount stuff on this enclosure. We're gonna set this stuff aside for later. I'm gonna take a look at the front of our enclosure. A little bit of schmutz on there. Sweet. Okay, so this spring 100% is going on here, right? Like, look how dope that spring looks like it's going to be. Honestly, I think that's a pretty good distance for it to be. So let's mark some holes. You can use whatever to mark the holes. I'm just using one of these awesome Posca paint pens that I love dearly and are good colors. So... You know, the thing is, the piezo is probably going to be right in the middle, right? So we just have to make sure not to drill, <laughs> not to drill into it, because then it won't work anymore. Ooh, we'll come in a little bit from our corners, right? So doink and doink. So we'll have that one for this guy. These ones, I haven't really thought about how I'm gonna attach these, but you know, maybe I'll just bend the end. Yeah, that works. So we'll just do a little end bend. Um, shoot, don't have pliers, but... if not creative, right? I always think it's funny when people say you're using a tool wrong. It's like, did it work? Um, what do you have to say? Did it work? Did it break the tool? If it worked and didn't break the tool, who cares? So that one looks good. Maybe this one would be kind of cool to do too. We'll do it the same way. 
I mean, honestly, this is the same way that you would bend something by putting in a vise. This is basically just a hand vise, right? Yeah. There's no rules. I think that's like an American thing. Being like, oh, that's the wrong tool for that job. You better come to my store and buy the right tool. <laughs> I just try to think about how somebody in a rural third world situation would deal with this. And it's like, you know what? They wouldn't go to Home Depot and buy stuff like I did before. They would rip apart something else they already had that they weren't using and make it work. And you know what? That looks ugly as crap. But it might sound cool, so we're just gonna try it and see what it sounds like. And if it doesn't sound good, take it apart, put something else on there. Oh man. I am kinda dying for a pair of pliers on this one though. Alright, I'm breaking down and grabbing pliers. No one did admit defeat. All right, needle nose. This might be something that we just twist when we install too. We might cross that bridge when we come to it. But this one. For sure, right? Maybe a little bit closer on that one. I mean, like that, huh? I like the idea of them getting smaller just visually would be kind of nice. Yeah. That one, definitely do this guy. That guy doesn't want to stretch at all. very scientific way of planning this obviously. I definitely want to stretch it though so maybe if we do one there we'll do the other one there. That looks cool. <clears throat> so we'll put those three on there and then our last one was this out really stupid but we'll see that's kind of what's fun about it so it's a surprise and then I think since I have this doorstop why not just put it on there right we'll just do that right did it hurt the tool no did it get the job done yeah who cares so these, there's a whole bunch of different door stops you can get. There's bigger ones, there's shorter ones, there's longer ones, there's stiffer ones, there's less stiff ones. I've, this was the cheapest one, to be perfectly honest. A lot of them install this really simple way, which is just you install this mount. Maybe we'll put it there. It, usually you put it on a door with one of these wood screws. We are not gonna use a wood screw because it won't stay. Uh, these machine screws that I got should work perfectly. Yeah. I eyeballed that at the store too. They'll work perfectly for mounting through the case. They will go all the way through the enclosure. I didn't even check that. That's just coincidence. So I'll mount it to the enclosure with that. And the, uh, door stop. It took me that long to think of the word door stop. Door stop, mount screws in there like that. And that's how it mounts. And it's super, super simple. And what's kind of cool too is you can take it off. Maybe if you need to travel with it. So, 
We know where we want to mount our machine screws and our doorstop. Do we? We don't know where we want to mount our doorstop yet. We were saying like, maybe over here because I'm right-handed. If nothing else. Maybe we want to have the enclosure vertical and have our out on the top. That might be kind of nice. I think I... No, let's do it like this. I think that looks cooler. I will put one out right up at the top in the middle. I'm gonna put that guy right there. Maybe we'll just draw something fun right there. Once everything is all done. Oh. Do think it's like right there? Yeah. Since this isn't a precision instrument, we don't need to use any precision. We're making it. That's what's fun. That was loud. Okay, so we need holes that are big enough for these to fit through. And ideally, we won't need to use washers to keep the head from fitting through. I do have this other thing I bought clearly from Hindiba that are some variously sized washers, but none of these. And that's pretty excessive though, huh? Also, this was old. I didn't buy these for this project. There's a lot of different stuff in here that doesn't really look like it's gonna work. I'm just making sure we don't drill too big of a hole. So, here's what we're doing with that. One of those things I feel like I inevitably mess up is picking the right size drill bit for the hole. And I'm going to try to do that kind of a thing. That looks pretty good. What does it say? It says they're number eight. That doesn't mean anything to an American person, unfortunately. This looks fine. All right. So, if you have a drill press, this is the time when you would get on your drill press and do it with a drill press, and it would be much more perfectly drilled. But we're doing it the fun way which is the slightly imperfect way and that's with a battery powered drill on my desk so make sure that's going the right way line her up I need a new battery in my drill. Sounding a little on the slow side. If I'm perfectly honest. Oof. That's not that's not going quickly. Not at all. Let me go grab a new battery. Things you just have to 
that you should think about before you do one of these kinds of projects. Holy crap, you guys. I don't remember it taking this long, otherwise... Wouldn't have done it this way. Dang. Well, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna... We're gonna, we're gonna persevere. I spread metal shavings all over my floor. That's another thing to consider when you're doing this project is metal shavings are not the same as wood shavings. You really don't want to get that shit anywhere, especially if you have a pet or something. It's just, definitely don't don't want that crap in your eyes or anywhere there. Any of your orifices. There we go. All right. And we're through. So, we'll check the fitment of one of our machine screws. We have to get a little bit of this. Give it a little bit of that. That's always fun to give it. I apologize now for the levels on this video. Sweet! So, fits right through. We've got our first pole. Let's do our next one. Once again, you should probably wear all proper safety material, take all the proper safety precautions, don't listen to anything that I'm saying. I'm not a professional, I don't know what I'm doing. I release all the liabilities and such. Don't do anything that I do or say. Right? Yeah, sure. Do at your own risk. Cool. New battery makes a huge difference, turns out. All right, let's drill some holes. stuff. Alright. Now what you would want to do if you cared about the surface that you were drilling on, you'd use a cutting mat or a vise to hold this or any number of safer options. But oh, it's fine. As long as you know if you're doing the kind of tension. Look at that, boom. Right through it. Why 
Why did that one go through so much faster than the uh, part I'm on right now? One may wonder. must just be a manufacturing inconsistency or something if you know leave a comment Three more holes to drill. Some of all my fingers doing great. Yeah, something about that part of it. It's a lot softer than this area. Maybe I just wasn't holding the drill straight. We may never know. Last one. All right. So we have all of our holes drilled for our machine screws to mount things to. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off into my trash can here. Go through one more time, just kind of time I'm gonna do this over something. Alright, cool. So we're gonna have all of our machine screws mounted in there with springs suspended between them. Which is gonna look pretty cool, I think. And hopefully sound good. No promises, right? Never know. Just in case, so hopefully I don't cut myself on any of these holes. I'm going to use this little reamer thing. Just to nicen these holes up a little. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure my fingers are safely away from it at all times. Cool. So now hopefully I won't cut myself on any of those little edges sticking up or any kind of burrs sticking out or anything like that. Yeah, you know, first try. next time who knows so got all our holes drilled they look nice we do need one more we need one for our quarter inch app and guess what that hole is probably gonna have to be bigger than a quarter inch huh 
and then it's measure it with a measuring tool that I forgot to compare. Yeah, if you have calipers or something, they're super useful for this kind of thing. So we've got fractional inches. That's exactly what we're measuring. Yeah, three eighths. So there you go. Not a quarter, but three eighths. So we'll put back this 530 seconds that we had before. And what's the next closest step? You know, you might have to do the 5 sixteenths and just work on that. And let's see what the difference is really is because you can say it in numbers but then once you actually see the physical difference then you'll know yeah that's a significant difference you know so let's use a different drill bit Yeah, that's why we have uh, more than one drill bit to choose from, right? So, we definitely decided that the uh, 3 eighths is going to have to be the right size, but that was a big initial hole to drill. And it's probably not going to work that well trying to drill a hole that big, so we're going to do a little pilot hole first in a very professional fashion. And then we'll drill out the rest of it with our 3 8 So you know what? Let's start it with this guy. This little guy. That little guy in our drill. Put choink like thusly. We want to put him in right in the top in the middle, right? Sure. Right there. We don't measure stuff. Cool. There's our pilot hole. I guess that would be the other advantage too for digging, digging, using the uh, eighth inch, eighth inch inputs is that you don't have to drill such a large hole. You don't need the same footprint that you need for a quarter inch out but that just happened to be what i had on hand you know so let's uh, see what happens all right that was a little scary but we're good i kind of knew it was going to jump right it's a bigger it's a bigger drill bit it's going to jump Honestly, all of this, all of this better done with a drill press. But I'm kind of trying to show too that you don't need fancy tools to do this stuff. We're gonna sell it, maybe. Yeah, do it professionally with professional tools. But if you're just doing it for yourself for fun, don't have to go out and buy 
a drill, a drill press. Even though you can get them, you know, it's probably inexpensive right now. If you're in the U.S., places like Harbor Freight are really good for that. Go to Swap Me's Garage Sales. Go to a garage sale, you find the right person selling it. Tell them what you're using it for. Tell them that you're going to use it. You might get it for free or very cheap. I got a piano for a dollar that way one time. And that was just because they knew we were going to play it. Sold it to us for a dollar. It's pretty awesome. Cool. All right, so there's that. Let's check that our quarter inch input will fit. Oh, hey, look, it does. All right, so kind of forgot to account for where our piezo mic was going to go, huh? But you know what? It looks like it's going to be great right there. That looks like a great spot. So before I start doing anything else, I'm going to throw that glue on there because it takes a little while to dry and we want to see what it sounds like during the stream. So it needs to be done before we're done. This stuff says that it's supposed to dry for 24 hours before handling. Fuck that. We're not doing that. I mean, it says that, but that's not what we're going to do. If you do go with this stuff, follow the instructions. Um, don't listen to me, the non-professional person. That looks like the right amount. Uh, use the size of a pea. I don't know. Who cares? That's what they say for a lot of stuff. The size of a pea. And look, even that was probably more than necessary because it's all glopped out the side and jazz. But that's good. I'm going to let that sit like that forever now, for a while. Uh, one thing, too, if you're, uh, if you're not live streaming or recording your build of this, you can hit that with a heat gun and it will go much more quickly, but I'm not going to do that to you guys after listening to that fan and the drill. I can only assume that nobody is left watching this video. So that's literally how we're going to mount the piezo and the quarter and whatever quarter inch output. There we go. Fine. So, we're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of our machine screws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Awesome. And then we'll need just as many of our nuts. So this is one of those projects, honestly, there's a million videos of people doing these and stuff, and I'm not doing this video because I have some new or original way to do it. It's mostly just to show that it's super easy and somebody that clearly doesn't have any clue as to what they're doing can totally get into this and it's like a gateway thing, they say. We'll see. Maybe we'll all hate how this sounds and I'll never make another one of these, you know. All right, so I'm going to just ignore all our glue drying rules and handle things before it says they're dry. Yeah. 
So there's going to be a bunch of that. But it's worth it. Super worth it. Just put my finger in the glue. Check it out. Cool. Now it won't be perfect. Okay. One of the things that I really like about this, besides it just looking weird, and it makes people want to touch it, you know, because it looks so weird, is that there's no wrong way to play it, there's no right way to play it, it's not tonal, it doesn't even have any discernible pitch necessarily, it's just fun for making noise. For the sake of making the waves. There we go. Nice and tight. Look at that. So I was thinking about painting this thing and like, oh, maybe we'll decide how we're going to paint it when we're done, but I don't know. It looks kind of cool like this. Maybe I'll just cover up the threads and paint it. It's because we don't want to paint the threads because then we can't change all of our springs later. That'd be kind of a cool sound to get. Just that kind of a thing. And like definitely running this through effects is where it's at. Because by itself it's kind of like, yeah it's cool you can get that like helicopter -y noise. You can get some kind of like fart-ish noises I suppose. That's what you're looking for, but the reverb, the delay, uh, like pitch shifting stuff is cool. So once we get this together and if it sounds good, I'll try running it through the, uh, the big quest or the zoom and just see what different effects sound like on it. Or I might just get on a one and just get stuck on it. And, only listen to reverb or delay. We could do a whole separate video just on what this thing sounds like. I bet you would So yeah, this is already not looking anything like the boss one, and I'm kind of excited about that because I don't want to have a bunch of the same looking stuff. So far it looks pretty, pretty industrial or something, which is people like you do you what would be cool is do something with like contact points like this or something There we go. Now it's probably completely unnecessary to be using screws that are so long, but these are just kind of the first ones I found. In. So I'm using those. <laughs> Sometimes you just use what you got on hand. And that makes it more interesting because you're like, why'd you do that? And make it up, or just say that's Glue is still not dry. I'm trying to avoid it. And honestly, like, just getting these as tight as I reasonably can without breaking anything. So I don't want them to move. I want to be really stiff, right, so they resonate. I 
assuming that helps it resonate, right? Because things that are really dense resonate pretty well. So I figure a really solid mount makes sense. Thinking some of these might get hard to play. We'll see. Maybe we'll mount that front one a little lower. Maybe we won't put one there. We'll just do whatever we want. Or maybe I'll stretch one between these two. I don't know. Oh, this one's gonna go the other way though, huh? That one's for our doorstop. So let's use this doorstop mount, which is not our doorstop. Uh, is this right here? Okay. You know what? I didn't even think about. So it might be a little difficult to tighten. Being all up in there, such as it is. But you know what? We shall persevere. thing is too is it kind of mashes that top and you don't want to do too much of that or you won't be able to mount it. So there we go. It's starting to take shape. I'm just screwing that on there as far as it wants to go. That might even sound kind of cool by itself to be honest. to be our first one, right? So I think needle and those pliers are going to be pretty integral to doing this project. Right? Yeah, I think so. access to the inside of it anymore other than to tighten this guy up there we go that's not going anywhere okay and I feel like having a base on it will kind of Solidify it some more. Dude, that looks pretty sweet. Is that? Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Right? Yeah. All right, so every pedal maker I've seen, they always write stuff on the inside. So we're going to do, uh, hmm, what do we want to call this thing? Let's call it. It's I got nothing, but right. So we'll be like, cool. That's us. We'll do a little bit of this, and then we'll do. A, what's our birth date today? Is today the twenty second? Is. And then we'll put like a big heart. How about that? And I can only hope that somebody finds this thing in 30 years and opens it up. Sees this and then laughs and then steals the components out of it to put in their post-apocalyptic war machine because the world ended 15 years prior. 
Anyway. Sweet. I got a little personalization on there, a little fun stupid thing underneath that only we will ever know about. And we're gonna seal that up forever. So it's nice when you order these enclosures for Mammoth is they give you all the hardware and everything and seem to be so much less expensive than any other alternative I could find other than reusing something, which honestly is, the, is what you should do. It's so much more fun to reuse something else that's going to get thrown away or, you know, it's fun to recycle. A lot of times cool stuff will look cool too when it's in like a wrong looking enclosure. But bought these for another project. I already had them. That works too, right? Okay. What I will probably do also, once I get this all done, is uh, put a non-slip thing on the bottom just to keep it from sliding around on the table and to kind of help insulate it a little bit from uh, like those types of noises that are going to get picked up by the microphone. And yeah, so I mean these piezo mics are great because they're cool. Yeah, I mean you can stick them on anything, but at the same time they, you know, they're not sophisticated in any shape or form. They pick up any sound that touches them. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. That's how really cool. Let's go that way. Alright. Not a lot of not a lot of apparent resonance there. That one looks like it goes for a little bit longer. Like I said, we'll see. There's no guarantees in today's process. Obviously, that one's going to sound crazy. If we've got a different spring that might fare better there. And honestly, maybe I'll just get another one of those. Put it there. That doesn't seem like it's going to really do much either. It's hard to tell. That's the impression I get. You know. Seems like it might sound interesting. Let's mount that one lower. 
You know what? I don't think I have any of the other bolts that I was going to use. You know what? For this one, if it will do it the way that I was planning to, and maybe for another one, we'll try to rip one and see if it makes any difference. Starting to get some real sunlight through that window there. All right. Do like there-ish. Whoops. Okay. So yeah, this is kind of what I was thinking is once we found our final happy locations for everything. Mash them between some screws and the nuts like this. Yeah. And then they won't go anywhere. And maybe more of a, you know, firm mount. Hope that they're resonance too. Maybe. and tweet. That's gonna be cool. You know what? Maybe we'll just do everything as one of those springs. Cause that sounds pretty cool. If you ask me. a good trick for getting uh, screws that have all of their like if it's a Phillips screw, screw and it's all stripped it's a good way of still being able to get it out too with two wrenches now oh my big dumb hands even with big dumb hands you can still make it work but yeah, you tighten those two against it, and then you can back it up. It's a good trick. Ooh, that one's nice. Sounds like a gong or something. That's cool. Is this going to even be any stretch on it? No. Hmm. No, maybe we don't use those. Oh, here's a little spring. Let's use the little guy. <laughs> this is going to be kind of hard to play. I mean, let's be real. Play. But it's going to be difficult with, like I said, I got big dumb hands. It makes this stuff harder. I do have, I think I've got a bigger enclosure somewhere. 
But I like the guitar pedal form factor. We can always do that kind of thing too, but let's, let's, let's try and stay on target here. Stupid, but you know what? Another idea. We can still get some length out of it, even though it's on this one. Doing that, right? Sure. Why not? Now I can take this guy off because he's just becoming. Becoming a hassle. Okay. All right. I feel like that was a creative solution. I'm just gotta make sure you stay uh, stay positive about those creative solutions that you come up with, and be prepared for them to go astray. Okie dokie. So we shall tighten. Tighten. Tightened further, maybe. This is kind of in the weeds here. This is kind of stupid. This is kind of not working. But actually, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll find a creative solution. These two are way better, right? I might end up drilling more holes out there. You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. And this is the thing that happens, you know? You can get this far into one of these and be like, I know the change I need to make. That's the beauty of it being your own project. You, you know when something's not working. And if you can come up with a creative solution that you're happy with, or even just something else to try individually. Well, at least it'll be something else to try. What I'm gonna try and do is send it. Maybe I'm gonna get, I think I might get rid of those altogether eventually, or just leave them as prongs for now. Oof, never say never, right? So I think I'm gonna take the take these two out. String springs like that because it seems like the shorter distance just isn't gonna be helpful. 
It's not gonna sound cool or do anything interesting. I could be like, oh, remember when I did that? That was so cute. So we're gonna take these ones out. And I hope nobody was following along. Because now they're going to have these weird random holes in their project. Maybe we can find something else cool to put in those. Definitely gonna find something else to mount in those holes. Yeah. And it's gonna be something dumb. Hopefully. Dumb to get there. Alright. So. That's fine, we're just gonna leave those there. These might even kind of act um, too as sympathetic things to vibrate, meaning they'll vibrate when the other stuff is vibrating, hopefully. That'd be kind of cool. So I think maybe the lesson is don't put the bottom until you're totally done. want it like like that right I wonder probably I'll pick that up huh no those two are so good I think in these shorter ones, just really, they're not really gonna cut it. Which is a little frustrating if I'm perfectly honest. Does that need to be tighter to be more resonant? I don't know, it just seems too stiff. Two and just leave the two up at the top. I 
I do feel like there's a better way to utilize these holes. You know what, for now, let's just leave it like that because we just want to see what it sounds like. So let's put the bottom back on. We can leave those two there for experimentation purposes. Right? Sure. I just feel like there's some better. Better way to utilize these two, these holes now. Let's just do it like that. Let's make use of it since we have it. And like I said, maybe it'll act in a sympathetic way. It'll be kind of cool. for sure. How about that distance, right? With a different spring, not that one. Let's see what I'm doing here. There's a spring in my spring. distance, right? That would be cool. Barely fits on there. Oh, that spring does not want to go, which makes me want to put it on there even more. And it means it'll be worth it, right? It goes on for long enough for me to consider that being worthwhile for sure. All right, so we're gonna mount one, our last one right up at the top here. And utilize a vast majority of the holes we dug, dr dug drilled. And maybe I'll come back later and put Something cool in there. Or not, whatever. 
need some holes in that. These two mystery holes. I should probably mention that it's worthwhile to have eye protection on for this and eye glasses, so I always have eye protection on, but it's worth mentioning that it's not worth losing your eyesight over building a stupid thing like that. like the needle nose were helpful for there's def needle nose pliers are always helpful. They're never gonna hurt to have. Crazy looking. That goes. That goes too. I'm digging that one. Really digging that one. Cool. I just want to see if. No. Could it? Could it? It could. Look at that. Alright, I'm keeping that. Put our springs away. Let's be semi organized here. Springs in the spring thing. Springs, springs, springs. Springs away. Uh, put the machine screw. Put the other machine screws. Remember when soldering was the most intimidating part of this project? on our glue, which is probably almost dry by now, let's be real. Alright, we will mount our doorstop. I love that this is mounting it. It's okay. to seeing if the P 
PXO is still lined up inside the machine and working properly. I have had times where I think that it grounded out on the chassis enclosure, whatever you want to call it. It's definitely the wrong way to screw things in in your hand, but I don't know. Uh, but then I just had to sort of rearrange it so the ground wasn't touching anything. It was all good. Last final hand tighten. Alright, and there we go. That's what it looks like. That's so freaking loud though. Compared to compared to the rest of it, this is just really obnoxiously loud. Yeah, let's go that. Might not be all bad. We, I mean, it does look pretty cool though, right? It looks crazy. Even if we took this off, I think it'd still look pretty cool. Um, let's plug it in. I'm all nervous it's not gonna work now. That's kind of what's fun about it though, right? Yeah, it's definitely working. That sounds pretty cool. Oh, and it makes the other springs vibrate too, which is sort of cool. cool actually like kind of better than I expected I think which is pretty exciting because I mean this is my first time making a spring type of a thing and it's it's nice it gives you good like nice uh, kind of like a drone on there be kind of cool if you could have it just go infinitely right so I was thinking maybe if I can get it to hold a you know, delay or a reverb or a combo of reverb and delay you know or maybe another effect that I haven't really thought about yet I wish I didn't have 90 degree power connections, but what you gonna do, right? Um, <laughs> I need to plug in my power supply. Okay. I'll put it on delay. Alright, let's do 
it sounds like. But yeah, it seems like the cool stuff is off of the, these guys here. Let's try some other good sounds.
What is that? That's what I was talking about. I should have should just kept it, huh? some really cool atmospheric stuff you can do with it, obviously. Especially with a pedal like this. Uh, before we go, I do want to test one other pedal that's just solely reverberous. There's that out. The transmitter from Earthquake Device, it's a freaking awesome company that makes super cool stuff.
yeah, there's lots of crazy cool sounds you can make with it. I think it turned out pretty good. I think uh, as far as uh, our first piezo party, piezo, 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 whatever, uh, I think it was pretty successful, and it looks cool. Doorknob, eh, whatever, right, but it's still fun. I think we need to paint it, right? I think we need to paint it. I'll do a video this week of painting it. Probably just on Instagram, though. Cool. So, well, thanks for everybody for watching. I think we had a pretty successful project. Started with nothing and got here. Uh, once again, these are all the supplies that I used for the most part. There's a couple other things that were on there, some tools, etc., that I didn't use, but here's a cool little visual for you or whatever there. Uh, thanks again for watching. It's been a good time. This was a fun little project. Hopefully we'll be putting piezos in more things in the near future. Uh, the site's... The site. The page is going to have some new looks pretty soon. I have a friend of mine doing a graphic force that's going to be super cool for part of the intro. Uh, once again, thanks for guys. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, I'll catch you all next time, Thursday. I'm probably going to do a jam, but we... I don't know. I might make another one of these. This is pretty fun. Uh, if people want one thing or the other, let me know. See you next time.